Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. Today's program is entitled, A Victory for Our Veterans, Good News for Those Who Served Us Well. So let's see how today's news may impact their financial future. Home for the holidays will likely never mean as much to our military men and women as it will when the remaining 40,000 troops stationed in Iraq finally return home. President Obama made the announcement on October 21st that the final withdrawal of all troops would take place before the end of the year, putting an official end to Operation Iraqi Freedom, which was launched in response to the September 11th terrorist attacks on our country. More than $800 billion has been spent so far on the Iraq War since 2001, with nearly 4,500 servicemen and women killed and more than 30,000 injured. This Veterans Day, let's honor not only these troops, but all who served our country well and give them the recognition and benefits they rightfully deserve. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. Operation Iraqi Freedom was the U.S. military operation name for the attack on Iraq on March 19, 2003, after an ultimatum given to Saddam Hussein expired. The operation had a number of objectives, including ending the reign of Hussein and his followers, and eliminating what we thought at the time were Iraq's weapons of mass destruction. Other objectives involved searching for and capturing terrorists, collecting intelligence, securing Iraq's oil fields, and delivering humanitarian support to the country's citizens. Hussein was captured on December 13, 2003 and eventually went to trial and was convicted of killing 148 Iraqis. He was sentenced to death by hanging and his execution was carried out on December 30, 2006. Since then, American troops have remained in Iraq to fight insurgents and terrorist organizations, such as Al-Qaeda, as well as help the Iraqi people transition from a dictatorship to a democratic government. President Obama announced an 18-month withdrawal plan for U.S. troops in February 2009, with more of a focus on supporting the Iraqi government and its security forces rather than U.S. combat. Almost 100,000 troops have returned to the U.S. since then, but the decision to bring home the remaining 40,000 troops was finalized when Iraqi leaders refused to grant them immunity from persecution in Iraq's courts. The United States military is governed by U.S. laws, no matter where in the world they're stationed. And while the cost of the Iraq war has been estimated to total more than $800 billion, some economists believe the final bill for the Iraq war could equal more than $4 trillion due to ongoing medical treatment of troops and the total cost to repair military equipment. Okay. So now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. The withdrawal of our U.S. troops from Iraq has been a gradual process, and many of them are still transitioning to their lives back home. Fortunately, the federal government has put several benefits in place to help aid in this transition, ranging from free health care, dental coverage and family support, to education and employment services. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs offers combat veterans who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq five years of cost-free health care after the date of their discharge or release. Veterans can also receive free outreach services, such as counseling while readjusting to civilian life at any local vet center. Other benefits include the post-9-11 GI Bill that provides troops who have at least 90 days of service on or after September 11, 2001 with financial support for education and housing. The costs paid by the federal government for compensation and benefits of military personnel have grown 46% per person over the last 10 years, according to the Center for Strategic Budgetary Assessments. Despite the increase in transition services, many veterans are having a hard time readjusting to civilian life. Nearly half of post-9-11 veterans who participated in a recent study conducted by the Pew Research Center said they are having a difficult time readjusting to civilian life. A private organization that is working hard to help wartime veterans is the Wounded Warrior Project. 
Founded in 2002 as a nonprofit organization, they honor and empower veterans who have incurred service-connected wounds, injuries, or illnesses on or after September 11, 2001. The mission of the Wounded Warrior Project is to provide free programs and services that meet the unique needs of these veterans and encourage rehabilitation and recovery during the time between active duty and the transition to civilian life. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? There are not enough ways we can thank our troops for the sacrifice they have made for our country, and they certainly deserve more than just government benefits. They deserve our everlasting support and should be welcomed with open arms when they return home. While government programs are in place to aid our veterans in their transition back to civilian life, they can always use more help to support these initiatives. So consider volunteering your time or donating to their causes. Veterans Day is an annual federal holiday that was put in place to remember those who have served our country well. It falls on November 11th which is the anniversary of the date World War I ended in 1918. This year, American families who still have loved ones serving in Iraq will be celebrating the end of Operation Iraqi Freedom. On this Veterans Day, take the time to appreciate those who have served us and pay them the respect they've earned for defending our freedom. And now for Matt's weekly financial tip, tool, or technique. Returning service members face more challenges than most of us will ever know. So it's very important they learn about all the benefits and resources available to them as veterans. New benefits for caregivers include a monthly stipend, health care coverage, travel expenses, and mental health services. More information about VA caregiver support can be found at caregiver.va.gov. The National Defense Authorization Act went into effect in 2008 to extend the eligibility of health care for veterans who served in combat on or after November 11, 1998. This act grants combat veterans five years of cost-free health care for any condition related to their service in the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. So here are three important points to keep in mind if you're a veteran. Key number one, who can qualify? Its veterans, including activated reservists and members of the National Guard, are eligible for this coverage if they served in combat operations after November 11, 1998, and were discharged or released from active service on or after January 28, 2003. Number two, what to expect. The benefits entitled to combat veterans include cost-free health and dental care as well as medications for conditions related to service, along with full access to the VA's medical benefits package. Veterans who qualify are also not subject to co-pays for conditions related to combat service. And key number three is how to apply. Veterans who qualify can get more information at their nearest VA medical facility, which can be found online at va.gov. They can also visit the VA Health Eligibility website or call the VA toll-free at 1-877-222-VETS, which is 8387. All benefits for returning service members can also be viewed at va.gov as well. Be sure to log on to our website and download our featured report, Financial Freedom Personal Checkup, a free report that guides you through the Checks and Balances Financial Decision-Making System to help you make confident, informed decisions about money and life. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Until next week, dump debt, invest wisely, believe in yourself, and make it happen.